good afternoon and welcome to our Coffee and Card Live event, Monday the 1st of April. I'm sure I got the date wrong last week when I was speaking to you, so I apologise for that. But I can't get Monday the 1st of April wrong, that's for sure. So I'm just going to leave these here for a second. This is what we made at um, Coffee and Card last week and finished today. So I'm just going to leave those on there for one second. And then I will get started. Hi, Scylla, lovely to see you. And hi, Jan, lovely to see you too. Just get myself organised. It's glorious weather here today. Um, I'm hoping, once I've finished here, to go and get my lawn mown. Um, much needed. Hi to you, Pat. So, fingers crossed. So, um, I'll be showing you what we made at... <laughs> it's a nice stamp set, isn't it, Jan? Um, so, I'll be showing you what we made at Coffee and Card. So, that was last week in Brackley, and then that finishes Monday in Toaster. And then I start again with a different set on Wednesday of this week. So, when we were making these last week, uh, and it's using Your Inspiring, which is this set here... Then there was the option, obviously, for the ladies to make Mother's Day cards if they wished to, because it was Mother's Day in the UK um, on Sunday, just gone. Um, but now they can make it as a um, just a birthday card, an Easter card, obviously, um, or just a general card. Some of the ladies this morning left the sentiment off altogether, so they could put a sentiment on as they needed. Um, it would also make quite a nice sympathy card sadly we do need sympathy cards so um that would be another good choice so let me just show you so this is the stamp set it's called your inspiring it is in the main annual catalogue and uh, we had that last year and it's carried over which is really nice so it has um, that's the title you're inspiring so obviously it's got two sets of these lovely daffodils um so this one here larger scale one and then this little line of smaller daffodils here um it's got five sentiments kind thoughts for you it's got happy easter you're inspiring a happy birthday and then because of you i am me with happy mother's day and because I didn't particularly like that sentiment, I wouldn't send that personally. What I did on my set was actually cut that stump in half. Now, I know a lot of you would be um, crying at this. But basically, all I've done is I've just taken some scissors, very sharp scissors, or, um, snips along the edge. And literally, <laughs> oh, thank you, Pat. Um, cut that apart okay I haven't um, I've left it raw if you like I haven't tidied it up or anything so that if somebody wants to use it as is complete then they can just butt it back up together and pop it on the stamp on the block and it will be as if nothing was uh, was taken apart but because I wanted to use Happy Mother's Day on its own and not the other sentiment I've literally cut through with some scissors where it got to this really narrow bit here I just used um, a craft knife to go through just to make sure because it was literally really close but it just goes to show if you have a sentiment that you don't like the whole thing of and you don't wish to just use a marker pen which would be one way round it you could use a marker pen just to highlight Happy Mother's Day with the ink um, and then this would be left out. So if you didn't want to do that, as I didn't, because you're sending a lot of Mother's Day cards, I literally cut that apart. So I know some people wouldn't like even the thought of that, um, but it worked for me. So let me pop those back in. In there, like so. As well as the daffodils and the sentiments, it also has these tiny little... Um, dots and if you can see those there and um, that I'm not quite sure 
what the purpose of that is because it doesn't really look like blossom or anything you know in the air to go with daffodils but um anyway i used it on one or two of my cards and it seemed to have a nice effect so we'll see anyway so that is the stamp set you're inspiring and let me show you some of the cards that we made in the sessions last week so i've got this one here which i've added a thank you to so for this one i've stamped the daffodils going along here and the daffodil stamp itself two of those comfortably cover the width of a note card so that makes it perfect so you only have to stamp it twice um, you could also stamp it in the center and then either side three times but um, we just used it twice and it worked perfectly and here I've added a nice thank you from this stamp set kindness and compassion and obviously it's got condolences and things like that but I do like this thank you um, so that's what I've used on there and the majority of cards I send out other than the birthday cards are thank you cards whether that's to my team or whether that's to um, customers that have made orders or customers that have um, bought in the past or online so there's one here's another one with the single um, sort of larger set of daffodils this one also you've done as an Easter card and as in the previous one, I've added some of the little embellishments on there to get a bit of interest. And I've mounted it on Mango Melody backing. So in all cases, we're using our standard note cards and envelopes. Um, they're really good size and they're great for coffee and card because I can just put another pack in and I'm good to go. And then another sample of the smaller daffodils and this time... I've run a little bit of that really pretty stitched ribbon. So that's Daffodil to Light ribbon and Daffodil to Light card behind. And I just let the stitching go across the top. I think that looks really pretty. And then Enjoy the Simple Moments uh, was from a stamp set which is now no longer available. That's Home to Roost, which is one of the celebration stamp set, the one that had the lovely cockerel design. So those were the ones that we made. And, of course, don't forget to stamp your envelopes. Okay, so I've done that on this one, obviously, to go with this one here. And the whole idea of stamping an envelope is to give a little indicator of what's inside. Um, so somebody knows it's something exciting, um, a handmade card, as opposed to a bill or anything else. Okay, so let's move on. Oh, and here's another one, sorry. This is, I popped this on Balmy Blue. Uh, again just a single one and just a note right so we're using for our stamping we're going to be using our whisper white thin whisper white card which is perfect for stamping on it's a really good price as well and for the first one I'm going to be doing the smaller daffodils and we're going to stamp with memento ink which I've hidden underneath my stamp set so basically I'm going to ink that up and I do like to leave either the block or the ink pad on the table and then you've got a nice surface to push against. If you're using both up in the air you get an uneven pressure whereas that way you get a really nice pressure and also then you can see whether that's inked up by looking in the light to see if it's nice and shiny. Hopefully I've picked up the ink pad that's got ink in not the one that's nearly run out we'll soon see so I'm just going to put this off the bottom and off to the right if you look at the stamp there is a gap between the bottom of the rubber of the stamp okay and the actual parts of the daffodils themselves so what I like to do is stamp that right off the bottom to make it look more natural so I'm going to stamp that off and to the right. I hope you can see that well enough. I might move that up a little bit. So us off and to the right. Okay, nice pressure on there. Okay, and there's my daffodil image. And I'm going to re-ink that for the left-hand side. Like that. 
again lots of nice light tapping and the same thing I'm going to have it going off this side off at the bottom and I'm just going to butt that up very roughly so it's close to the existing daffodil there we go so I've got a nice line of daffodils there I'm just going to stamp the other one while I'm there because I'm going to use the blends pens to colour them in and I've got them ready here um, um, but you do want to make sure that the memento ink is nice and dry before you do that so I'm just going to give that an extra minute to dry so that's the um, small ones there finished I'm going to take the larger daffodil and this one I'm going to stamp um, at the side again I could do it in portrait if I wished like this one either way I'm going to have the bottom of the stamp just coming off the bottom of the card so I'll do the same thing just ink that up like so and I'm just going to put that to the side hope you can see that okay I'm going to do it quite high, I think. There we go. Okay, so there I have my larger daffodils. And I'm just going to add the sentiments again while I'm waiting for that to dry. So I'm going to do another thank you. That's using that kindness and compassion stamp set. I'm going to put that one on here. It's a little bit too big for the other one so I'm going to pop that let's pop that there actually for this one so nice pressure and there we go like so and then I'm going to do another thank you a smaller one um, and this one is from a different set altogether and let's find my ink. This is from Southern Serenade. And it has a nice thank you and a nice happy birthday. And quite a sort of um, nice script that's quite forgiving. So I'm going to pop that on the right hand side. Like so. Okay, so those are my two stamped pieces of card. I'm just going to colour those in. So the colours that I chose um, for this set was um, Daffodil Delight, um, which is this light one here. And then I've chosen the Dark Mango Melody because I wanted a nice dark contrast colour. I've got a bit of Pumpkin Pie and I've got Light and Dark Old Olive. They seem to be nice combinations, but we use lots of combinations of greens, yellows, orange, um, you know, whatever people wanted to do. So I'll just take the light um, old olive. I'm not going to make you sit and watch me colour these all in because it'll take a little bit of time. But one thing that's worth remembering where you've got a very fine line is first of all use the fine tip, okay, not the broad tip. And instead of following a line down, for example like that okay where you get quite a heavy line if you just brush it down like that can you see it gets narrower and also gets lighter so it does mean and I'm just practicing on this a little bit here you get a much finer detail less likely to go over the edges so I'm going to do that on here um, you'll see me bearing in mind I've got the camera between me and the So literally just very light brushing to fill it in. Okay, A, it's much quicker than doing it um, in more detail, line by line. If you're just brushing, it's much quicker because you're not color literally colouring everything in. Okay, if you want to add a bit of um, darker colour, so I've got this one here, this is the dark old olive, then also you can do that. You can use exactly the same technique 
Okay, so if you want a little bit of shading on those leaves, you can do that and then go back with the lighter one if you want to just blend that in. Okay, but just keep that um, very light action, just almost just brushing the top and down and it, it makes it, um, it's really effective but without having to do too much, you know, detailed colouring. So um, that's that one there. I'm just going to show you how I did this one, which is really very much the same thing. The colours that I used, let's move those out of the way, for the daffodils was I started with um, the light daffodil. And in all of the cases, I suggested to the ladies that they use the fine tip because it is quite a small area to colour in. And if you use the big tip, um, that can cover a fair bit and it but it can go outside the lines very easily so I just literally went over with the light daffodil to light then I brought in the melon um, melon mango the mango melody and just added a little bit more color now daffodils as I've been studying for the last week come in all sorts of different colors so it's very forgiving. Some of them are this sort of yellow all the way through. Some have very pale petals and a deeper um, sort of trumpet part of it. So anything goes really. Some of them are almost white as well. So I've just added that bit of detail in there. And then if I go back to the lighter daffodil and just blend that in a little bit. I'll bring it up to the camera so you can see it. You get a very soft blended colour. I'm hoping you can see that okay. Okay. So basically we're going to colour in the daffodils as you can see and also then the greenery let me just show you how I did that with the, similarly with the leaves really. So I just used um, the light old olive. And again that sort of brushing motion. Like so. And then if you want to add a bit of detail, let me just do that one there. As I say, I'm not going to sit here and colour the whole thing in. So I just took the darker one, for example and just added a bit of darkness behind where that leaf would be to make it look like it's um, shadowed and then just blend that in like so so I don't know if you can see that detail on there okay so as I said I'm not going to colour the whole thing in um, here was two that I made earlier. <laughs> so there's one there and one here. So once we've got the um, daffodils and everything coloured in and we have our sentiments, we can add some ribbon. Um, so the latest um, this morning and the week before had lots of combinations of ribbons that they could use. And we had some backing cards, so I'll just show you the ones that I chose. There were a few other selections as well. Um, so this is the Mango Melody. If I just use these ones because they're coloured in, will give a better effect. So this picks up the colouring from the Mango Melody marker. Some of them were quite corally and coloured in colour so that's a little bit more of a contrast that makes that stand out I do quite like also the light blue because that almost looks like the sky behind the daffodils themselves and obviously daffodil delight works perfectly so I'll just finish with this one so this standard layer is three inches by four and a half inches. This is three and a quarter by
by four and three quarters and that fits on our standard note card which is three and a half by five when it's folded so you can see how this is going to layer up with a nice border all the way around so I'm just going to stamp a sentiment again onto this one and put that card together to show you if I can find my thank you I'm just going to do that because it's the 1st of April um, one thing I do do is uh, reward my team for their sales and any achievements that they've um, made the previous month so there'll be lots of thank you cards to make for them so I'm going to pop this thank you on yes thanks for your comment Jan in fact looking at them a lot of um, daffodils don't have yellow orangey trumpets they're all yellow right the way through um, so it just goes to show and in fact I think you've got daffodils as your um, Facebook image haven't you and if you look at those they're mostly yellow right the way through with a little bit of orange right in the center so we're going to layer those up I'm just going to use my snail let's move these out of the way oh they're in the top somewhere so just that down there a bit in the middle and there like so I'm going to pop that onto my layer and the way that I do this without it going hopefully to um, skew with is to leave my fingers underneath there as a barrier so it doesn't go straight onto the card then I just move it to get it lined up and then when I'm ready I push it down over my fingers rather than having it um, straight on okay that's going to go on to there so I'm going to fold the note card so these come ready scored <laughs> you would be biased Jan yeah quite right there we go so that's that score and I do that and then fold it open so that you've got a nice flat base to work on if you work on it like this this tends to pop up and it's very difficult to lay that down as a layer so I score it fold it rather and then I'm going to put this onto there exactly the same thing I'm just going to use some snail and this I'm going to put in a different direction like that you don't need a lot of snail and exactly the same thing put my fingers underneath it just till I've got it positioned properly and then pop that down so there is my card I'm going to add a bit of ribbon so here is um, some of the celebration ribbons sorry that's not available anymore and all I've done is just tie it into a little bow and I have got some glue dots somewhere uh, it was attached there we are so the best thing with the glue dots and any bows or ribbons is not to handle the glue dot take your ribbon push it onto the glue dot and then lift it off so the glue dot is attached to the ribbon because if you handle the glue dot by taking it off with your fingers for example then the natural oils from your fingers gets onto it and it makes it less sticky of course if you want a less sticky glue dot then you could pick it up with your fingers so this one I'm just going to pop there okay although I could put it underneath my thank you and then I'll just finish this one off as I say I'm not going to um colour those in I'm just going to add this thank you onto there so again leaving the block with the stamp on the table just thinking that up and again I'm going to, mm, I'm going to put this one top left like so there we go so there's my thank you on that one. This I think I'm going to put on the blue because I think that's really pretty. So just be careful not to smudge that because obviously it's damp for a little bit. So if you turn it down, just keep it flat on your paper. There we go. So exactly the same thing. Put that on there.
okay and then that's going to go onto a note card and then finally we'll do i'll show you how i do the envelope and that'll be another set of note cards ready to go these would be really easy to make um you know half a dozen just stamp out a whole load and then spend an evening coloring in um so i'm going to pop that onto there obviously if you've got some gems or anything and you want to add some detail then you can do i haven't done on these ones but i'll show you the ones again from earlier so i'm going to pop that on there again fold it out keep it nice and flat just position your fingers underneath until you've got it in the right position and then when you've got it right let it go push it down so there we are so i've got that one and that one and then just a trick with the envelope so I'm just going to stamp um, a part of that on the envelope I'm going to do that on the front so I'm just going to take the little daffodil stamps ink that up like so and I'm going to pop that just on the left hand side and again just off the bottom and off to the left so there's my little daffodils and then if I'm colouring those in what I tend to do is take a spare piece of card doesn't really matter what it is and before I colour I just put the card inside the envelope just pop it down to the bottom so that when you're colouring in normally with a blends pen it goes through to the back and if you look on here you can see where that ink has come through now it doesn't tend to do that on the envelopes because it's um, double thickness so you have got a thickness behind but just to stop it coming through pop a little piece of card right down into the bottom and then you can um, colour in your daffodils and your stems you could leave it um, plain as well, uncoloured would also work. Okay, I won't do the whole thing for you because you don't need to see me colouring in all day. Let's just do a little bit of that, like so. You see, I'm not being particularly precise about my colouring in. Okay, just add a little bit of the pumpkin pie to the outside of the trumpet. Let's keep Jan happy. And then just a little bit on the inside. So there is the envelope being done. I'm not going to sit and colour the whole thing in. But then if you remove this card, you can see there's just a tiny appreciate you probably can't see that just a tiny amount of blends come through so it's unlikely to go right the way through to the back of the envelope but if you want it to look pristine pop a card in till you've done your coloring and then take your card out if you're just inking and stamping that'll be fine you wouldn't need to do that because it wouldn't normally go through so let me show you the finished samples again so we have that one have this one here and this one and on the samples from coffee and card as I say we've added these little sequins and I've got them in that very pale green and then that one in the daffodil which I really love the matching ones there we go and obviously our finished matching envelope so all of those were done using your inspiring so this is the stamp set it is available to order it's 18 pounds and that includes all of those stamps in this format with the um, red rubber and the foam okay it is on page 132 of the main catalogue I'll just show you what it looks like in the catalogue because sometimes it looks um, different, the layout. So this is the page in the catalogue, number 132. If you're interested in that, then just give me a shout. 
so thank you so much for joining us i am going to pop up the details of my class dates i hope that's readable for you so these are my classes as opposed to my coffee and card so my coffee and card runs every monday wednesday and thursday in various locations and i have members of my team um, that also run coffee and card around um, their local area and these are my classes so these are two hour sessions so they're more detailed and i run those in brackley and in milton Keynes. so if you are local and you'd like to join us then those are my details there thank you pat i'll see you for coffee and card thursday afternoon we're doing men's cards this week um so that'll be a bit of fun because we tend to struggle with men's cards i know so that's me for today thank you once again i'll just leave that up for a second to finish off with and i look forward to seeing you next monday to bring you our coffee and card live then thanks so much for visiting thanks for popping in if you're live and those are my details there at the bottom i'll just move that further up and there thank you very much thank you Scylla. lovely to see you nice to see you jen nice to see you jan and pat thank you very much bye